Hi there, Lightwave people. This is a simple technique that should have you up and running in no time at all. Two objects are used here, a one meter by one meter squared box and a text object. So here we are in layout, objects have been loaded. So let's get started. Select the box, items, add, clone, clone instance. Let's hide the original box because we won't need that. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Here's the instance generator with that single box on. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna line up those instances to match with our text. So in this case, we're gonna use a rectangular array. So because we know our box is one meter by one meter, that's gonna help us with our calculations here. So we're gonna fill up the text. I uh, don't need them that big, so 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Because they're smaller, we now know to resize that to 20%. There we go. So that's filling that quite nicely. So front view, X. You can always move the center point. And Y. That looks pretty good. Oops. And bring it forward a little bit. What's that? Five. That's pretty good. Let's see what that looks like. So that has now, oh, nearly. That has now, let's add an extra one. There we go. So that has now covered the entirety of our text. That's looking, that's looking good. So we're going to cut a, a hole. We're going to cut away the instances to show the text. And to do that, we're going to use the ray casting node. So, uh, oh, hello, ray cast geometry. There you go. So uh, quite simply, base position of each instance into the ray origin. Double clicking on the node. We're going to use the 8-bit layer or object. And then we're going to use the inside function of that to weight the instances. Let's hide the object. That's looking pretty good, but we can uh, we can do better than that. So uh, you can always move move this layer amount to to fit, and also you can. A little bit of stretching as well might help. So to get it looking nice and chunky, I've moved and stretched the uh, the base text around. It looks like I need more instances. So again, quick edit. A few more instances on the X here. Actually, I didn't need to nudge that, but anyway. Uh, there we go, that's looking pretty good. So uh, turn the weight off. It might be nice to keep things streamlined. So cut down on the amount of instances you really need. But actually, that's Yeah, that was looking pretty good. Now for the animation. Let's hide. Let's hide our instances. We don't need to see them. And let's go to the source object, which is our box in this case. Add some simple animation to the box. So in this case, all I did was started at, uh, I think it was about 20 meters up in the sky. I use the motion modifier for this. I use the gravity. And played around with the settings. So start frame 10. In this case, uh, 
16. Make it a bit heavier. Doesn't have to be quite so low the elasticity. Obviously, play with those until you're happy. Now, I know that starts on frame 10, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to make sure none of them show up until they actually start moving. So I'm going to put a keyframe. Uh, I've been using fixed, which has been a very nice addition, but I need to add use modify here. So keyframe on each of those, and then at frame zero, ten, uh, zero. I've got now to use a computer. Here we go. Let's uh, pop into the graph editor. Select that go stepped for each of those so now what should happen is it just pops up on that frame there well that's all the hard work done now let's apply that motion to the instances uh, let's go let's hide the box go back to the instance generator here we go let's zoom in on that a bit Okay. Now you know you'll notice that although the box animates, there's not much happening to the text to or to our instances. So if we, uh, in this case, the world instance, well, the world setting works quite nicely here. So uh, let's use that. But we want to delay the box falling, each of the instances falling. So let's create a null as our base point and let's call it base. Let's move it, move it to the left. Okay. Now the uh, in the instance generator time offset. We need to click on that. We need a gradient. We need it to set to from previous layer to in this case distance x or x distance to object select the base layer now this will be zero which represents this point and what are we on here one meter so uh, about one two three four five six six meters away we want a keyframe there uh, now first frame we don't want any offset at all so the value will be zero and to get the ball rolling here, uh, six meters, we want a minus number in here. Let's set it to linear as well. So what should happen now? Yes. A minus number will delay. If this was a positive number, this would be in front of the source object, which we don't want. We want it behind the object. The smaller the number, the smaller the offset. So I've got 0.3. Let's go minus 0.7. So that's quite nice. Uh, if you wanted it on the X, obviously you'd set that, but uh, it jumps to one meter. What's so about five? So that works quite nicely as well, but we don't want that. We want it on the X and it's remembered the settings as well. So that's quite good, but it's a little bit uniform. So let's add a bit of randomization to it. Let's pause that as the pans are kicking in. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, let's go to procedural texture. We'll just use a simple turbulence here, but you'll see it's made a, a hideous mess of what we've just worked on. We need to add it. And in a similar sort of way, a minus number delays the timing. So if we just put them, it only has to be a little bit. You'll notice that that's randomized our drop. Obviously, play around with the textures. If you've got uh, 
plenty to choose from and you've also got uh, scaling and all sorts of stuff the smaller the number the year uh, the more the offset between the instances and that is essentially it sometimes this isn't uh, doesn't quite hit the spot for you uh, you can be a lot more accurate uh, just by using pretty similar settings but nodally uh, but that's for another day so with all that done that just leaves us texturing to do quite a simple setup knock on to uh, flip to VPR uh, let's hide our text object because we don't need to see that shift click on the surface to bring up the surface editor uh, okay so uh, node graph let's be really quick about this uh, so I need a gradient I find sometimes disabling the preview speeds things up a bit uh, and an instance info well, random fix will map all the instances between zero and one or some something along those lines anyway so uh, let's zero let's just go magenta let's go darker magenta or pink if you prefer into the color and there you go so you've got control over that So that's looking pretty nice. Of course, what you could also do is to animate them off. Go back to our source box. Add a keyframe. Zero, zero, zero. F2. F1, smooth that out. off they go and if you want to nudge that just use the dope sheet up here just to nudge it around a bit a bit later and the nice thing about this uh, latest 2018.0.2 is before if uh, if you scaled the box to zero at this point it would cut out all the other instances but it doesn't seem to do that now which is a uh, which is a nice touch and there we go i hope that has been of use Love the new renderer. Bye-bye. <laughs>